Hess's laws gonna be the topic of this lesson in this chapter on thermochemistry. Now, in the last lesson, we learned about enthalpy and enthalpy changes. And in this lesson and the next, we're gonna learn two ways of actually calculating delta H for reaction. Now, if this is your first time joining me, my name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep. This is my brand new high school chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications. You'll be notified every time I post a new lesson. All right, so Hess's law here. So this is the first of two ways we're going to learn how to calculate delta H in this chapter. There's a third way we might cover a few chapters down the road. So, but this is the first of two ways, and students often confuse the two because they're both used to accomplish the same task, calculating delta H of a reaction. Now, Hess's law is the worst of the two. It is the harder of the two. The next one's going to seem far easier, be more of a plug and chug type calculation when we get to formation reactions in the next lesson. So, but for this one, it's Hess's law. And the way Hess's law works is you're going to be given a, a series of reactions, and you're going to have to combine these reactions in a variety of ways to add up to some overall reaction to figure out the delta H for that reaction. So, a couple things you need to realize. So if we look at some similar reactions here to this top one. This top one's one we actually coming from the last lesson. And we see that delta H for that reaction. And let's put a little uh, standard symbol on there. So delta H for that reaction is negative 572 kilojoules. Okay. So the question is then what would be delta H for this reaction? So in all three of the following reactions are all related to this first one. And so in this case, the second one here is just double the first one. Notice we're just doubling all of the coefficients. And if you do double the amount of the reaction, well, then it doubles the delta H value. And so in this case, your delta H would equal 2 times negative 572 kilojoules. We don't even have to do the math here. I just want to see that realize it would be doubled in this case. Now, if we look at this third reaction here, so how does it relate to the original? And you'll find out that it's exactly reversed. So here, water is the reactant instead of the product. And H2 and O2 are the products, not the reactants. So, but the coefficients are exactly the same. And when you reverse a reaction, rather than liberating heat to being exothermic, the reverse reaction would be endothermic. And so you're just going to change the sign here. And so in this case, a couple different ways we could look at this. We could look at this as just negative 1 times negative 572 kilojoules. Multiplying it by negative 1 would change the sign. Or we could have just simply written delta H equals positive 572 kilojoules. So we'll see there's kind of a reason why I wrote it this way. All right, finally, in this last one here, so we've done a couple of different things from, again, that original. So from that original reaction, we've reversed it. Now water, liquid, is the, the reactant instead of the product. So, But I've also cut all the coefficients in half. So notice coefficient of 2 is now a coefficient of 1, and a coefficient of 2 is a coefficient of 1, and a coefficient of 1 is now a coefficient of 1 half. And when you cut all the coefficients in half, it's going to cut delta H in half. And because we changed or reversed the direction, it's going to change the sign. And so in this case, delta H is going to equal negative one half times negative 572 kilojoules. Or we just could have said it's equal to half of positive 572 kilojoules, same diff. But the idea here, and this is a tool we're going to use in Hess's law, is that if I give you a reaction's delta H, I haven't just given you that reaction's delta H value. I've given you any multiple of that reaction's delta H value as well. And we're going to have to figure out how to manipulate a variety of reactions to add up to some desired overall reaction here when applying Hess's law. So here was our first of two applications of Hess's law. And the desired reaction we have right here, and the goal is really to find his delta H value. Now, you're provided with three reactions, so and their corresponding delta H values. And you have to figure out how in the world to manipulate these three reactions, whether you leave them alone, whether you reverse them, whether you cut them in half, whether you double or triple them, all those kind of things, and figure out what variant of each of these three reactions you need to add together that'll add up to give us exactly this reaction. So once you figure that out, then you'll add up the corresponding delta H values for those three variants. So, and they'll add up to give us the delta H of this reaction. And the idea is that this is really based on the fact that delta H is a state function. It is independent of pathway. As long as I start with these reactants and end up with these products, it doesn't matter what pathway we use to get there. Delta H will work out the same no matter what pathway. So in this case then, whether this reaction goes you know, exactly from these reactants to these products, or whether it's going to be some combination of three steps that ultimately accomplishes the same thing, delta H would be the same in either case. That's why this works. So let's take a look at how we approach this. So 
typically there is a method to the madness here. So typically we want to start with exactly trying to get exactly what you need. And so the first thing I need, I see here is I need three moles of NO gas on the reactant side of the reaction. And so we're going to look and see, okay, where is NO gas showing up over here? And if we look, the problem is that NO gas is showing up in two of these reactions. And so that's usually a telltale sign that you want to skip it and make that the last thing you try to balance. Because the idea is that let's just say you didn't see it in this last one right here. You just saw it in this first reaction, NO gas. Well, it's two moles. You need three moles. It's on the reactant side. Well, you need it on the reactant side, so that's good. But it's two moles. It's the wrong number of moles. You'd have to get this to three moles. You have to multiply this reaction by one and a half. And by the time you did that, it would make this look correct for a minute until you added some variant of this reaction, which would then involve more moles of NO and it would throw it off. And so that's why we're gonna skip it here. We're gonna save the NO for the end. We'll move on to N2O here. And for N2O, the only place it shows up is right here. That's it. And so by the time we you know, manipulate that reaction to get it to look exactly like this, it's never gonna change again because that's the only place it showed up. So in this case, I need N2O to be on the product side of the reaction. And in this reaction, it is on the product side of the reaction. So far, so good. I need the coefficient to be a one. Here, the coefficient is a two. So we're not gonna use this reaction as is. We're gonna have to cut the whole thing in half. And so in this case, we'll take it and say N2 gas plus one half O2 gas goes to N2O gas. And in this case, if the original reaction has a delta H of 163, cut everything in half, and now your delta H would be one half of 163 kilojoules. Cool. And again, the whole point in doing this is we made sure that N2O is going to look exactly like this. And now that it does, it's never going to change because it again, doesn't show up in any of the other reactions. So now we'll move on to dealing with NO2 gas. And if we look at the desired reactions here, the only place that NO2 gas shows up right here. So once again, we got to figure out, can I use this reaction as is, or do I have to change it a little bit? Well, I need NO2 to be a product. NO2 is a product. So far, so good. I need one mole of NO2. This reaction involves two moles of NO2. So again, we can't use this as is, but I can see that I need to exactly cut everything in half, just like the last one. So in this case, we'll have NO gas plus one half O2 gas going to NO2 gas. And again, if we cut that in half, then we'll cut the delta H in half as well. It'll be half of negative 113 kilojoules. And again, the whole point of doing this step is we want to make sure that NO2 looks exactly like what we need it. All right, so now we gotta look and say, okay, now we've done two of the three, we gotta go back and look at NO now. So one thing we should keep in mind is that we already have used one of the reactions that had NO gas in it. And so the, the second reaction that has NO in it, we're gonna have to use it to combine with this one to look exactly like this. So we need three moles of NO gas on the reactant side of the reaction. So far, we've got one mole on the reactant side. I need an additional two moles on the reactant side. And so in this case, again, we've used the second and third, uh, the second and first reaction. We need to use this third one. This third one here, lo and behold, does involve two moles of NO, but it's on the product side. I need two more moles on the reactant side. So we're gonna have to reverse the whole reaction here. And if we reverse the reaction, that's gonna change the sign on the delta H value. So instead of positive 181 kilojoules, it'll end up being negative 181 kilojoules. Cool, and that's gonna get us two more moles of NO gas. Now, if we had any other reactions left at this point, we might have to do a little further manipulation. We'll key in on that in a second here. But if we look at what we've accomplished so far, we've now got a total of three moles of NO gas on the reactant side. So when we combine these three reactions, we're simply just gonna combine everything on the reactant side and then everything on the product side into one reaction. So let's accomplish that here. So we're gonna have three moles of NO gas. We're also gonna have a mole of N2 gas, and then a half mole of O2 and a half mole of O2 gives us a mole of O2 gas as well. And then on the other side, we've got N2O plus the NO2. And then another N2 and O2 as well.
All right, so the way this works, anything that shows up on both sides is going to cancel. And so we can see that the N2 gas falls out and the O2 gas falls out. And you can see that everything we're left with is exactly our desired reaction. Three moles of NO gas forming one mole of N2O gas plus one mole of NO2 gas. And so if these three steps add up to exactly our desired reaction, then their three delta H values add up to our exactly the delta H value we're looking for here. So we're gonna add those together. So in this case, one half times 163 plus one half times negative 113. So, and I could say plus negative one times 118 or just or sort of 181, or I'm just gonna say minus 181. And we're gonna get negative 156 here. Cool, and that's our application of Hess's law here. Now, every once in a blue moon, you'll get a, uh, one that's just a little more complicated than this. So because in addition to getting exactly what we want in this balanced reaction, you also want everything else to cancel. Well, in our case, it did. This mole of N2 canceled this one. So this, these two combined were one mole of O2 on the reactant side, and it canceled out with this one mole of O2 on the product side. And we see that everything that wasn't what we were looking for totally canceled out. Had that not been the case, sometimes they'll give you one additional reaction, and your goal is to use it to cancel out the remaining things you don't want. So that's one step harder. Usually though, this is usually kind of the extent, and, and truth be told, this is a rather difficult example in that I've given you three reactions. Sometimes they'll give you easier one and maybe only give you a couple and things of a sort, but this is Hess's law. All right, so here's our second example of using Hess's law. And I'm gonna give you just a window into kind of where, you, uh, where your goal might be of how good you can get at these. So. Uh, we're going to do it the long way in just a second, but I'm going to work this out the short way so and show you that I don't usually write everything out because once you've done, done enough of these, you kind of realize that it's going to work out when you manipulate it in a certain way. So we're going to take the same approach though. So if, I'm going to start with the first thing I need in my desired reaction. So, and I need C2H4 gas and I need one mole on the reactant side. Well, the only place that shows up is right here, C2H4 gas, and it's one mole, but it's on the product side. So this reaction is going to need to get reversed. And if I reverse that reaction, that's going to end up being negative 52.3 kilojoules. Okay, so, so far so good. Notice I haven't even written it out, but I know that that step is going to contribute negative 52.3 kilojoules. Now, the next thing I know need is six moles of F2 gas on the reactant side. And when I look, I see that F2 gas actually shows up in two of these reactions and I skip it. So it's going to be a pain in the butt to balance. So it'll be the last thing we balance. Then I move on to CF4 gas and CF4 gas shows up right here. But in this case, I need two moles of CF4 on the product side. This reaction's got one mole on the product side, so I'll need to double the whole thing. And so by the time I add that in, that'll be double times negative 680 kilojoules. But that'll make sure the CF4 shows up exactly as we need it. And then finally, we've got the HF, and I need four moles of HF on the product side. HF only shows up in that first reaction, and it is on the product side, but it's only two moles. I need four moles, so we're gonna have to double that whole reaction, and that's gonna end up being, therefore, a delta H that's two times negative 537 kilojoules. Now, what's nice in the way these questions are designed is they only give you the reactions you need. I've never seen them give you a bunch of extra reactions and stuff like that, because that just gets uh, exceedingly more difficult. So in this case, we've used all three of the reactions and provided we've manipulated them correctly and we have, then we're just gonna add up the corresponding delta H values to get the overall delta H. And so in this case, we're gonna get uh, negative 52.3, plus two times negative 680, plus two times negative 537. And in this case, that's gonna add up to negative 2486.3. Cool, and it turns out that is the correct answer for the delta H of this reaction. And normally, if I were taking a test, been a long time since I've taken a gen chem test, but if I were taking a test, that's how I would approach this. I wouldn't take the time to write all this out. So that's gonna take too long. But the first several examples of Hess's law you work out, I would highly recommend you work the whole thing out. And now we're gonna go back and do exactly that. So we said we're gonna start with the C2H4 and that the third reaction was the only one where it showed up. But to make this work, we had to reverse the reaction so as to get one mole on the reactant side. So that's what we're gonna do. And that's gonna get us C2. H4 gas going to two carbon solid plus two H2 
gas. And therefore, once again, that would now be negative 52.3 kilojoules. And that takes care of the C2H4. We moved on to F2 and we said because F2 showed up in two of the reactions, it was gonna be a pain in the butt to work with and we'd save it for the end. So then we'll move on to the CF4. And in this case, CF4 was on the product side of the second reaction, but only in the second reaction, but it was only one mole and I needed it to be two moles on the product side. So we had to double this reaction. And that's gonna leave us with two carbon solid plus four F2 gas going to two CF4 gas. And if we double the whole reaction, that's gonna double the delta H value as well. And then finally, we gotta deal with the HF and we need four moles of HF on the product side. And the only place it shows up is that first reaction, but only two moles on the product side. So we had to double that one as well. And that doubles the delta H value, so two times negative 537 kilojoules. Now, if you notice, we never actually went back and dealt with the F2. And I took it for granted that if you've used all your steps and you've used them correctly, well, then everything else is gonna work out. But now let's go back and take a look at this. So in this case, if we look, we've used all three reactions and we never took care of the F2. We said we'd have to go back at the end. But in this case, I'm counting on the fact that it took care of itself if we've used all the reactions provided correctly. And in this case, the C2H4, good to go. So the CF4, two moles on the product side, good to go. And the HF, oh, I wrote this wrong. Let's get that right. So four moles of HF, but that's set up correctly now as well. But it turns out that the F2, we had four moles of F2 in the second reaction that we added in, and then another two moles in the last one we added in for a grand total of six moles. And we can take this further and realize that two carbon on the reactant side, two carbon on the product side, two H2 on the reactant side, two H2 on the product side, everything we don't want in our desired reaction is going to cancel. And so now everything we need is there and everything we don't want has canceled. And so yes, all three of these steps add up to our desired reaction. So their corresponding delta H values add up to exactly what we need, which again, we already calculated as negative 2486.3 kilojoules. Cool. That's our second application of Hess's law. Now, again, this is the harder way of calculating delta H, but if you're provided with a bunch of reactions and their corresponding delta H values, that's where they're expecting you to do. But in this next lesson, we'll learn there's an easier way, but you got to be provided with the easier data, which are called formation reactions. So, but for Hess's law, this is it, but this takes a fair amount of practice to get comfortable with, to get good at, and to be able to do it in a timely fashion. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, consider giving me a like and a share, a couple of the best things you can do to support the channel. And if you're looking for the study guides that go with this lesson, or if you're looking for quizzes and practice scams for help with Hess's law, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.